So this is a video about uh, video, video and timeline for Pyramix version 10. So I'll be taking you through getting some video in, getting it playing back and editing it and uh, getting it to some outputs. So uh, the default way for getting uh, video in Pyramix is going through the import video clips. <coughs> I've got a choice of how we import it, so we can have it append, uh, so creating new tracks at the bottom of the current project. And we're going to make sure we're placing the video clips in the timeline, and also that we're automatically grouping the aligned clips. So we're going to go import, we're going to grab our video, and we're going to have it drop on the timeline, and there we go. So now that we've got our video on the timeline, um, just very quickly, I want to go over how it uh, functions because it's a bit different than, than audio because of the fact that video needs to be edited on a frame. Um, so when we have a video on the timeline, if we just zoom in on the head of it, you'll notice that it's actually locked to the frames. If I zoom in a bit more, you can even see it a bit more. So it's actually snapping two frames by default. There's no way to really undo that uh, for the fact that you need to have it on a frame edge. And that goes for just about everything. So all your fades, if I make a cut, it will cut at the nearest frame. Um, and that is to ensure that you maintain sync throughout. So once we've got the video, and open it up and have a little look. And you can see that there's the associated audio. Happy days. Uh, just to be aware, we can also, of course, do that, and we'll be able to get the video uh, crossfaded, edit it, do whatever we want. Yep, and it can be treated like a normal piece of, of audio on the timeline in that respect. So the other way that we get video into Pyramix is by simply using the Media Manager. So the Media Manager now will see video files as well as audio files. So I'll go here, and uh, sorry, we'll go there, and there we go, that's my video sequence. And we can see here on the trimmer that I now have a empty video track a, uh, and my associated audio. So let's say I just wanted the video track in. I could grab it. Um, now you'll notice that I obviously can't put it on an audio track. I can put it on video tracks only. So if you want to drag and drop, you're going to need to add a video track first. And once that video track has been added, you can then grab and drag and drop on there. Yeah, likewise, you can also obviously grab and drag and drop with the associated video and or associated audio, and it will come in with it as well. So to get into a video output, first I need to choose a video output. Um, so for the release, so it's going to be uh, a bit less than this. this. Is just a beta at the moment, um, but we assign to our video output, and once we've got it assigned to our video output, we can then choose a video output window, and here we are with our video which then is able to run and runs backwards and forwards and nudges oh, if I nudge by the frame and so on and so forth. So there we go, that's video. So this video overlay window is something we can resize, which is quite handy. Um, we can also open multiples of them. So I can open up another video output window and then I've got two. Um, if we right click, there's a variety of uh, tools that we can have here. Uh, probably the most interesting one though is show overlays. So show overlays uh, allows us to see the uh, burn in time code for the project. Now the defaults that are set are in our video settings. Uh, and actually I've, I've changed these from the default, but the default is our minutes, seconds, frames on the bottom center uh, with a various font and, and white on black, so the normal way. But here you go, that's uh, where we can change what's in. Now we can see I'm seeing the frames as well. Yeah, happy days. So we can also assign these to uh, pro video outputs using Blackmagic hardware. We can then go into the settings and if we have it connected, our video cards will come up here and we can select which output we want them to go to. As well, what we can do is we can give ourselves frames of compensation on both the floating window or on the graphics card or and make them different amounts. So we also have a video tab. A video tab is quite handy because what it allows us to do is by using these tab windows, we can actually position uh, a window that's not a, a floating window, it's actually part of our user interface, and very nicely and neatly place the video into our user interface. 